So this is a meeting of the Youth Education Cultural Affairs of Brooklyn CB2, and it's being recorded for public access. Um, and it'll be on the CB2 YouTube archive in accordance with the open meetings law. Uh, we conduct remote meetings with the members' cameras on, and we encourage public attendees to leave their cameras on especially if you uh, will be speaking. And if you can keep your microphones muted when you're not speaking, that would be great. Um, and we'll make it known when topics are open for comments by community members, uh, by committee members, and so on. Uh, you're encouraged to use the chat, and we're committed to access for everyone. Okay, so... Uh, my note says the committee secretary will conduct a roll call, but I'm just going to suggest that um, the chair, the co-chair, the secretary introduce themselves and then everybody else alphabetically. So figure out where your name is alphabetically by your first name. Okay, so I'm, I wish I'm the chair of this committee and my co-chair. Unmute yourself, please. Dorothea Thompson Manning, co chair committee. Great. Welcome. And Meredith? Good evening, yeah. everyone. I'm Meredith Phillips Almeida, um, I, community board I, member I, and I, committee so member secretary. Welcome. Um, and now, alphabetical order. I'm guessing I'm next, I think. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Nicholas Pereira, committee and board. Hey, Nick. Welcome. And? Only went after M. That's why. Not A. <laughs> Oscar, are you there? Hi, I'm here. Oscar Luckett, uh, committee and board member. Oh, and I see Mr. Sproul has joined us. So, um. I'm here and uh, I'm here and uh, I'm a board member and a committee member and glad to have finally been able to get on. Yeah, and we're very happy to see you. We haven't seen you for a while, so we're glad you're here and well. So that's great. Uh, and we have another committee member, Santia. Hi, I'm Santia Policia, committee member, board member. And I see you're wearing the voting badge. You voted yes. All right. Okay, so um, now we introduced the members. Um, you saw the agenda uh, in your email. Is there an approval of the agenda by consensus? Great. Okay, uh, so the next, the main part of our meeting tonight is a presentation by the Brooklyn Public Library. We've been looking forward to hearing about the their new the implementation of their new projects, and then after the presentation, first the members will have a chance to ask questions, and then members of the public. So we're excited that you're here. Please present. Great. Well, thanks. Uh, thanks for having us. And uh, good to see uh, a number of you again. And um, good to, to meet the ones um, we haven't met before. Um, my name is David Wallach. I'm the uh, um, Executive Vice President for External Affairs for Brooklyn Public Library. Um, I have a number of uh, my colleagues um, here as well, um, including a number of um, the uh, branch librarians, Kat Savage from our uh, John Street Annex and Jan Janet Cotton from uh, Walt Whitman um, and uh, Tracy Mantrone from uh, the Clinton Hill branch. Um, and there are a few other folks um, as well, um, including uh, Sonia Covington who runs um, um, our capital planning and uh, um, we'll maybe weighing in um, later on when we get into um, uh, describing some of the capital projects going on in the district. Good evening, everybody. Um, but first, um, 
I just want to take a, a, a step back before talking about those projects and just talk a little bit about where we are as a system right now, um, given what's been been happening over over the past nine months. So we we closed our doors on uh, on March 16th and, and stayed closed through mid July. Um, and at that point, we began to gradually open some of our branches for grab and go service. Um, uh, um, we've also referred been referring to that as lobby lobby service. Um, patrons are able to return books and pick up book, books that they put on hold, um, checking out the materials using our self check machines or using their um, using our app on their phones. Um, and um, that's pretty much that's been it. So w we've been able to offer arguably our core service, but there's so much that goes that goes on in our branches um, that we have um, not been able to um, to do yet. So this this is this is has been and will continue to be a, a very gradual process to bring um, our branches um, branches back to life. Um, right now, we have 24 of our 60 locations that are open for um, for grab and go. Um, we expect that number to go up over time and also gradually to begin to offer um, more services um, in in um, in our in our libraries. But it's um, it, it's it's going to take some time to get there. Um, of those 24, um, we have two branches that are in Community Board 2 that are providing lobby service, um, the Annex um, and um, uh, um, the Walt Whitman branch in, um, in uh, Fort Greene, um, both of which opened in um, mid-September. Um, so I think part of the challenge for us over the past nine months um, given the limitations on what we can do in our buildings um, has been to um, pivot and um, provide new ways um, of offering services and expand on um, uh, the, um, uh, the, t the tools that we have. So we, we've really turned our attention to virtual programming um, and Here's an, an array of some of the things that we've been we, we've been doing. Um, we've been doing a lot of um, uh, um, story times um, on Facebook Live. Um, Cat um, Savage, in particular, has been been one of our stars. But we have a lot of stars throughout the system, and we're doing about 10, 10 a week. Um, uh, librarians for branches all over the borough. And we've actually been attracting um, more folks um, through the virtual story times than um, we were able to um, uh, to bring into our in-person story times pre-pandemic. And and similarly, we've been doing we've been able to do a lot of other things, ranging from um, tutoring services through a service called BrainFuse resume and job search assistance um, and um, cultural programs, including through our new Center for Brooklyn History, which I'll talk a little more about um, in a bit, um, and uh, some new exciting projects, um, one of which is on the screen um, is the, the 28. Yeah, I think there might be a problem with you sharing. I think it. Um, you have you haven't been sharing. If you, if you need help, I can I can share. Oh, um, huh. OK. Um, let's see. When did I it drop well. out? David, go ahead and choose share in the upper left hand corner and then choose share content. Okay. Let's see. Just give me a minute. Great. Oh. Now, let's 
We're actually looking at your desktop right now, not at the slide content. There it is. All right, that should do it. Um, so let, let's go back a bit, because I just want to show you what we missed. Um, so first of all, <laughs> I want to show off our branch, uh, our branch librarians. Um, Kat, Janet, and Tracy, um, and uh, um, turn to the map. So again, here are the two locations where um, we've started grab and go service John Street um, uh, at the Annex and the Walt Whitman branch. And um, so here, here's the here's the slide I was just re re referring to. Um, which shows some of our virtual programs. Um, so now my, my comment about CAT probably makes a little more sense. You can see here in the middle of the screen. Um, and um, we, we basically, where, where, wherever, wherever we can, we've been um, trying to make as many of our services available online, using, using Zoom for cultural programs, again, using FaceTime Live for our story times, um providing things like resume help and uh, job search assistance um uh over um over uh, over over email um and um uh i think where i was um before the point where we could see the slides was um mentioning the 28th amendment project which is a project we've been conducting largely via um community zoom meetings um about uh, three dozen of them over the course of the past nine months, where we've been getting feedback from folks all over the borough on what they'd like to see in a 28th Amendment to the Constitution, um, which um, we've we've com compiled um, and um, uh, um, have made available to folks for uh, to consider to continue to weigh 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 in on weigh in on. Uh, Another project that uh, we've been able to do, not 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 virtual, but just one I wanted to mention um, because it relates to um, Community Board Two. Um, we've for the first time uh, started a poet in residence program, and uh, Syree Jarrell Johnson, who was our first poet in residence, um, is uh, a professor at um, is a professor at Pratt. Um, so um, we're, we're we're glad to um, glad to have have him on board. Um, the, the challenge with the with the virtual programming, um, as as successful as, as it's been, is it's really um, uh, um, un unmasked this 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 ongoing challenge of the di digital divide. So it's you know the the availability of all these services has worked. For Work well for people um, who um, uh, uh, who have computers, who have broadband access, and it, it doesn't um, uh, it doesn't work for those who who um, who, who don't. Um, we've been trying to do our part to help bridge that divide. We've we've left the Wi-Fi on in our libraries, um, and we're beginning to try to expand the reach of that Wi-Fi so mo more people in the neighborhood. Um, can have um, can have easy uh, um, easy 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 access to it. Um, so that's sort of an overview of where where we're at um, as as a system right now. And um, you know, as I said before, we're we're going to keep building on that. Um, but as long as the the pandemic is here, we're going to be constrained from making full 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 use of our buildings. Um, uh, at least in the um, in the short term. So I'm going to turn now to the the capital projects that we that we have going on in in the district. And and before doing that, I just wanted to take take a, a, a step back. We, we we probably have more going on in Community Board Two now from a, a capital perspective than we've ever had at any point in any Community Board in in in, in the borough. That that said, it it all those projects are part of a, a a a very robust capital program that has has grown tremendously over the past five years. Um, part of that is due to the Brooklyn Heights project, which we'll which we'll talk about and the revenue that it's brought in. Part of it, um, I think, um, reflects an increase in funding from other gov government sources. 
Um, but the upshot is we're doing a lot of work um, around uh, around the borough. Um, but there is 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 nowhere that we have as much going on as as community board two. Um, and um, uh, um, it's. it's one of the reasons why we're we're really glad to be here tonight to give you a, a, an update on all these all these projects. So we're going to talk about um, go back. We're going to talk about um, the Brooklyn Heights project, and then two projects that relate to the Brooklyn Heights project. Um, and I'll and I'll explain those connections. The the Adams Street Library um, and the um, the the Wall Whitman branch, um, and uh, we'll also give you an update on the, sorry, the screen keeps jumping, on the, our piece of the, the um, South Site project at, uh, at 10, 10, 10 Lafayette. Um, and the last one that's not on this screen that um, I'll touch on is our newly created Center for Brooklyn History. Um, I believe, Heather Mallon, who is running the center, who came to us from the Brooklyn Historical Society, is also joining us this evening. Um, but let's start with Brooklyn Heights. Um, so just to sort of refresh everybody's memory, um, th this, this, this project um, involved the city selling the site of our old Brooklyn Heights library on Cadman Plaza West. Um, which netted us $52 million um, and the, the core and shell of a new library at the base of the condo tower that's gone up um, in that location that's now called 1, One Clinton Street. Um, so we, we are getting a, um, a brand new library and we'll walk you through the latest, latest um, des design. Um, it is, um, the library is now in construction and we will be opening, um, the new branch in summer 2021 next summer. Um, the project also brought in revenue that we're able to apply and we've begun to apply to other library construction projects around the borough. Um, it also, the building also includes um, a STEM lab for DOE and um, created um, 114 units of affordable housing in Clinton Hill, um, which I'll, I'll com com come back to, um, come back to in a bit. So on the screen is um, the layout of the um, first floor of, of the library. And so just to orient you, um, you see, Cadman Plaza West at the top of the screen, um, Clinton Clinton Street um, on the other side of the building. The, um, the the residential tower, the the entrance is here on Clinton Street, and so this this gray part is the um, uh, the um, uh, is part of part of the, the the residential portion of the tower, and this yellow and then into the, the green over here is the first floor of our library. And I'll, I'll show you <laughs> renderings in a bit so you can see what these look like. Um, oh, let me go back. Jumped ahead too quickly. Um, but um, the green is the, the main hall of the library, um, which cut, cuts through from, from Cadman Plaza West all the way to, to, to Clinton Street. Um, here's the entrance. And then over here on the north side of the building, um, in the the prow, the prow is a is a um, a reading room. Um, my my laptop keeps wanting to. I guess it's reminding me to try to go quicker. Um, so I'll try to I'll try to do that. So he, whoop, that went too quick. Um, so here is um, a view of the the main reading room from Cadman Plaza West, um, and. There's uh, this circular welcome desk um, uh, at the front, and you can see the middle of the the, the reading room um, has um, uh, bookshelves and places to to sit sit and work. Um, and on the other end, um, abutting Clinton Street, is a um, reading circle 
where um, we'll be able to have smaller programs, author talks, um, but when it's not being used for programs, um, people will be able to use the space um, more informally, as you can um, as you can see here. Um, and then this is the prow of the um, of the of the building, um, uh, which we're setting up as a as a quiet reading space. Obviously, um, it has light coming in um, from uh, from from both sides. Um, and then jumping up in the mezzanine space of the building um, is a teen area. Um, so you can see here, there's a small conference room in the middle, some casual seating um, right in front of it. And um, then there's the sort of mezzanine itself with, with books, on, books on one side. And what, let me just go back. What you, can't see what what would be a little um, would be on on the left side um, is a um, uh, another room for um, uh, for uh, for teens, and then I'm going to jump to the lower level um, where you can see the stairs coming in from the the first floor um, uh, leading down here to the um, entrance of the children's area. And um, this is what you'll see when you come further in. Um, th this is the latest rendering we have of the children's area. This design has changed. There um, is going to be less of this sort of platform space for children to, to, to sit on um, and more um, tables and, and chairs in the, um, in the revised, um, revised design. Um, I don't have a rendering of it here, but on the other side of the lower level is a large 200-person-plus um, uh, multi-purpose um, multi, multi room. Um, and that's the, um, the, the slides I wanted to show today, knowing that we have some, some other, other locations to talk about, but... For those that are interested, on our website are some of um, some of the other renderings we have, which show some of the other spaces um, and give you some other views. B before moving on from the Brooklyn Heights design, one other piece I wanted to touch on, and, and Betty, I know you you, you were interested in this. Um, one um, um, connection between the old um, uh, Brooklyn Heights Library and the new are the um, bas reliefs. That um, adorn the the um, uh, old entrance um, of the um, of the of the of the previous branch. We we made a a, a commitment um, to um, uh, to keep those and find a good use for them. Um, uh, there, if if everybody recalls, there were there were six groups of these panels. Two of those groups are going to be placed in, um, I'm gonna jump back for a second, um, are going to be placed in um, two small conference rooms. One that is um, um, off of the main hall um, over here um, with a, a of a view of um, Clinton Street, and then right above that is a second conference room um, on the mezzanine. And so each of those conference rooms are going to have one set of the bas reliefs that are going to be um, visible um, visible from the street. Um, and the other bas reliefs are going to be placed at Walt Whitman, and um, I will come to that in uh, in a few minutes. So um, the, the last piece of Brooklyn Heights that, that I wanted to talk about um, is the affordable housing. This is not our portion of the project, um, but uh, um, we've always been excited about this. It's one of the nice benefits um, for the, 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 the borough and the community board um, coming from the project. These buildings are up. The, um, uh, um, uh, the the apartments um, are done. They look they they look they look terrific, um, and I know Hudson is um, in in the in the process of um, 
um, allowing some of the, the fortunate people among the thousands that have asked for those spots um, to to uh, um, to get apartments. So those those are to be occupied um, are going to be occupied soon. Um, so I'm now going to jump to another project that relates to Brooklyn Heights, um, the Adam Street Library. So we um, uh, until now have never had a branch um, in the Dumbo Vinegar Hill area. Um, when we went through the ULERT process um, and were in discussions with, with Councilman um, Levin about the approval for the Brooklyn Heights project, and there was a lot of talk about the, the size of the, 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 the library, um, we'd committed to making the Brooklyn Heights Library 26,000 square feet, far away the largest branch library in our system. Um, and then beyond that, made a commitment that we would build a, um, a small library in Dumbo Vinegar Hill. We found a, a great location at um, uh, on Adams Street. Um, the address is also 35, 35 Plymouth. So it's on Adams um, uh, between Plymouth and John, um, a multi-use building. Here's the um, exterior plan for the exterior signage that was just approved by the Landmarks Commission. Um, and um, one of the, the the neat things about this project was, you know, we had a much shorter time period to really begin to not only build the the, the library space from the from the from 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 the 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 the, the ground up within that building, but really start to build a, a library um, community that used not to exist. Um, so we had a, a great um, engagement process over the course of 2019. And um, the, the other sort of nice opportunity that arose was when the Brooklyn Children's Museum moved out of their space in Dumbo, Brooklyn Bridge Park um, uh, made it available to us essentially, essentially for free. So we're in temporary space on John Street, it's not was not quite a, a a full library, but allowed us to get our feet wet and has given Kat and her team um, a chance to start to build up relationships with with stakeholders in the neighborhood and and to begin to provide some some library some library services. Um, just a, a quick overview of what that space is going to look like. Um, the 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 core of it. Um, after you walk in here, there's some teen space here and then a raised platform with the children's area, um, which includes stroller parking underneath. Um, there's um, the adult reading room on sort of the waterfront side of the, the space. And then also our great architects here, Work AC, managed to squeeze in um, a um, multi-purpose room and another another small conference room. So, like the the Brooklyn Heights design, we're we're really excited about about this one, and looking forward to opening um, both spaces um, in uh, in summer twenty one. Um, okay, so Walt Whitman. Um, I mentioned how the the other bar reliefs are going to come to Walt Whitman. Um, Right now, Walt Whitman does not have sort of functional outdoor space as part of this rehabilitation project. We're going to be building um, a new outdoor garden, and that's where the, the bar reliefs will be placed. And we're also going to be upgrading the infrastructure and make, making improvements to the interior space. Um, Jan Janet and, and, and uh, her team at Walt Whitman have have done a, a great job in this. It's a it's a Carnegie Library that in some ways you know looks really nice on the outside, but I think the inside leaves a lot leaves a lot to be desired. The downstairs space in particular, there's a lot of underutilized space. So as part of this project, we're going to be able to take some old mechanical space and turn it into programmatic space. So we'll effectively be able to make the 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 the, pub, the, the space that's serving the public larger as part of this project. Um, as as well as an overall interior rehab and an upgrade um, to the infrastructure. Um, the lion's share of this funding is coming from the Brooklyn Heights revenue. There's also a portion that we were able to get to apply to the interior work um, with um, uh, the, the help of a lot of the community stakeholders who, who weighed in on the downtown revitalization um, 
um, funding funding uh, funding process. So we got one one point two million um, from the state um, through that program that we were able to um, to apply to this project. Um, on the other side of uh, of Fort Greene, um, we also were given yet another opportunity, um, essentially leaving aside the build out of the project, free space um, that we're getting as part of the the L10 um, cultural condo, which has been um, essentially a partnership between Two Trees and um, and the city. Um, I can't I can't speak to to the overall project, but I can um, tell you about our our piece of it. So the 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 all the cultural space in the building, there's about fifty thousand square feet. We're getting twenty seven hundred square feet, um, which is um, small for a library, um, but um, I think we're going to make particularly good good use out of it here. So it's going to be a branch. Uh, it's going to be a, a BPL library. In 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 some ways, it's going to be open to the public. There's going to be space for people to come in and use. Um, there'll be Wi-Fi. There's a small collection, um, but it, it's 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 really going to be a a, a special space geared geared towards um, its location with a, a focus on um, uh, the arts and the cultural happenings. Um, in the neighborhood and around the borough, it's going to have a small collection um, fo focused on focused on the arts that will um, we expect to um, re revolve and to some extent tie into what's going on um, in in, um, uh, in 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 the, in the cultural in the cultural district um, it, it, itself. So we're, we're we're excited to bring. A new library to the neighborhood, and, and also um, excited to um, um, provide a space that's particularly tied into the um, the cultural community. Um, our work, um, our construction work, has um, has started. It will get done in 2021, but the 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 space itself um, is expected to open in 2022. Here's sort of a wider shot of what um, the BPL. BPL space is um, is going to look like, and um, before opening it up to to, to to questions, I just want to touch on the the, the newest addition um, to to B BPL, which is the Center for Brooklyn History. Um, we um, recently merged with um, the the Brooklyn Historical so Society and pulled together. Um, the Historical Society with our own Brooklyn collection. Um, that combined entity, the Center for Brooklyn History, is going to continue to be housed um, at, at 128 Pierpont. Um, and um, it's, a, it's a beautiful building. Um, it's a little ironic that we've taken in this, this, this new entity that has a, a library that's arguably um, more beautiful than any, any of, of, of the libraries, the other libraries in our system, but we're really, we're, 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 we're happy um, to, to, um, uh, to have this, this, uh, this, 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 this have created this new entity. Um, I, I guess two, two primary goals. Um, uh, one is um, to um, continue the, the the great work that um, the historical society had been doing, both in terms of ex ex, ex um, exhibitions and um, the education work that they do and the programming work that they do, um, and um, the great work that our Brooklyn collection has been has been doing, um, and and also to begin to have the the center leverage the library system so to create a better connection between the neighborhoods around the borough bring the work that's happening at the center um, to the branch libraries um, in terms of those programs in term, terms of those exhibitions so um, we're, we're really um, we're really excited about um, this this new part of um, who, who we are um, one last note um, on the Center for Brooklyn History um, and its Pierpont, um, Pierpont Street building, we are um, we have 
we have um, uh, closed the um, the temporary branch on on Remsen Street, which was not suited towards grab grab and go um, grab and go lobby service. Um, but before the end of the year, we'll be opening um, grab and go service for Brooklyn Heights um, at um, the Center for Brooklyn History um, low, low, low location. Um, and wanted to let you um, wanted to let you know that. So um, I know that probably took way too long, and I went past my ten minutes, but um, we had a lot of ground to cover. Um, you know, I, I said this said this before, but it sort of bears repeating. Um, this is really an exciting a array of projects for us, and I think part of what we've we've done over the past few years is leverage some some opportunities that came our way, tried to think creatively about them. Um, we still have a ways to go. We still have some new libraries to open next year, and we have some other ones that are going to follow in, in the years after that. Um, but uh, we hope we're well on our way towards a really special set of, 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 of libraries for this, um, for, this, uh, for this part of the borough. Thank you so much. That was an excellent presentation. Uh, I myself grew up in the Patagat Library, not in this neighborhood, but somewhere out in Brooklyn and Central. So first I would like to open uh, the conversation, uh, the questions uh, to the members of my committee. Is there anyone on our committee who would like to uh, offer a question? Raise your hand or talk Hi. to you. Good Nick. evening. Yes. Hi. It's, um, just quickly, I was wondering if there was any specifics available on the STEM um, program, any updates on that? I think last time there wasn't much to share. So just curious if there were any specifics. Is that a question? I see. There's an arrow on his screen, so maybe there are some technical difficulties. Okay. Yeah, I see a circle on his screen. So. It, does, it does appear that Mr. Wallach's having some technical separation. Oh, nope, he's back. He's just muted. <laughs> David, you're muted. Okay. Um, so I'm back. I don't know what happened to the uh, to the presentation. It looks like it disappeared, but I'm glad to be back. Um, uh, yeah, happy happy to happy to take um, happy to take any questions. Yeah. So uh, Nick asked about for any updates on the STEM program that was a collaboration with the Department of Education that was going to be coming uh, to the Clinton Street Building. Yeah. So um i uh we've we've heard from 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 the department of education and i know that the 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 district is um is you know they obviously have they have their hands full on many fronts um but they're um uh uh they're 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 i guess re refocused on 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 that space um the the school construction authority Really early in the process, about four years ago, had come up with a design. Um, so I'm not sure of the the latest schedule from them, um, and if the STEM space is going to be ready b b before the library is or after. Um, but I will say that we we've raised with with DOE um, the um, uh, the um, uh, the issue that when, when, when they do open up, there's, there's an enormous opportunity for us to collaborate with them. Um, and, um, uh, you know, we have begun a, um, uh, a, a terrific program around robotics around the borough, um, that we, we, we'd love to be able to work with them on. So, um, we've, um, uh, I guess initiated that dialogue with DOE. Um, I think it will have to be a question for them in terms of what their what their schedule is. Um, but I think when they when they do open, it's it's going to be um, an exciting opportunity for collaboration. 
Thank you. And uh, Santia has a question. Um, just really a statement. I'm a little disappointed that the stone, all of the stone walls could not be incorporated in this um, loca site location. But um, I, I'm excited about the branch opening up because on the outside, it looks beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from our committee? Let me scroll and see. Uh, Oscar. Can you hear me? Great. My question is similar to Nick's. Um, I'm wondering about what specific new programming will come out of the Center for Brooklyn History in conjunction with the Brooklyn Public Library that didn't exist before. Um, so if, if Heather is here, and I'm not sure if she is or not, um, uh, okay, I'm, I'm gonna assume the silence means Heather's, Heather, Heather's not here. Um, uh, so it, it, as I alluded to, um, alluded to earlier, um, and, and this, Oscar, this may not answer your, your question in terms of specifics, and I'm happy to, to come back to you with some of the, I, some of the ideas that are, that are brewing. Um, but I think that the, 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 a fundamental goal is to, um, uh, de develop programs that are going to, um, uh be geared towards na neighborhoods neighborhoods all 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 over the borough um and um uh, uh you know i'll give i'll give i'll give give you give you w one, one example which is something we're starting starting to think about um in east new york where we're going to be building a new library um uh we've received um, funding from the the council member there um, to include in that new space um, a um, heritage center um, that um, will focus on the African burial ground that's under that location. Um, so here's here's an opportunity for um, uh, us to tap into the expertise of. Um, both the staff at the Brooklyn Collection and the new staff coming from the Center for Brooklyn History um, to work with us and work with the um, the East New York neighborhood around the New, new Lots Library as we figure out um, how to um, uh, um, how to incorporate that space in, in the new library there. So just one example that comes to mind. Um, of us sort of in integrating the ex expertise of the, the Center for Brooklyn History um, with the what's going on in the library um, around uh, around the borough. Um, as for some of the specific programs, um, we can probably best if we re report back to you with with some of what we're starting to plan this year. Um, this, this planning has just sort of gotten underway. Um, and um, I think over the next couple of months, we'll, we'll be um, um, uh, pull, pulling some, some of those new, new ideas together. Thank you. Uh, any other questions from committee members? No, this is Eric, I have my hand up. Okay, Mr. Sproul, yeah, you're on, okay. Um, I'd like to say that I'm a little disappointed at what I am going to refer to as the, um, the library by the Brooklyn Academy of Music, which you're calling the South side or whatever. I thought it was going to be more comprehensive, like the, the Arts Library at Lincoln Center. Uh, that being said, uh, I'm a musician, and uh, uh, when I've needed sheet music, what I've done is I've gone to the Central Library, Grand Army Plaza, gone to the top floor, and availed myself of the uh, of the uh, sheet music collection that you have up there, and made copies, and uh, it's it's uh, it's eliminated a tremendous expense 
uh, in, in, in terms of buying that kind of sheet music? Is that, sheet, is that the feature still going to be at the central library, or will it be at the library at BAM? Um, yeah, it's a good, it's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a good question that, that that's going to remain at the, at the, at the, at the, at the central, central library. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, our, our, our space, um, uh, at BAM, as I mentioned, is, is 2,700 square feet, not, um, uh, not, not a whole lot of space to work with. Um, so I think it would be, it would be tough to bring the the whole sheet music collection um, over, but Eric, it's an interesting sort of raises an interesting question. If if there um, is, is is some way to incorporate a portion of that in in a in in a way that's going to be useful for people um, uh, at um, at uh, the the south side space. So it's it's I don't think it's necessarily out of the out of the question. Um, but I don't think we could accommodate the whole sheet music collection. And so then I think that the challenge is, is there something smaller that we could do that's going to be of use, use to people? Um, if that's, you know, sort of in a se separate place from what, what remains at, at, uh, at Central. Um, so um, I'm not sure that can happen, um, but we, we still are a, a ways away from filling out, um, uh, figuring out what exactly is going to be, um, be on the shelf. So it's, it's, it's something we, we can, we can take, take under consideration. Okay. Thank you. Uh, anyone else from our committee, uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Dorothy? Do you have any questions or comments? Dorothea? She's mute. I don't know if she has any questions. Oh, can I just ask a quick follow up? So, who's speaking? Just again. Um, I to, right. um, ask a follow up question about the STEM Center program. Um, I'm curious if any conversations have happened and or you, you will happen uh, around equity access and, you know, you're seeing it with who can already access programming. So I'm just wondering if, you know, if, if schools that are not right around that library area could, would or could be prioritized as likely, you know, schools right around there probably don't have a STEM access and programming issue, uh, whereas other schools within this uh, area certainly do. So just curious if any equity conversations have, have happened. So, so Nick, just, just, to, just to be clear, so the, the, the STEM space is not, is not, not our, our space. Um, so it's, um, it's, it's great. It's great that it's, that it's, that it's going to be there. We're, we're, we're happy that it's going to be there. And as I said, I think there are going to be some interesting opportunities for co collaboration. Um, I think the, the, the decision on how that space gets used is going to be up to the, the, up to the DOE. Um, I, you know, my, we have been. Um, put in touch with um, with that school school district. So I think um, uh, our our expectation is 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 that it's going to be lo largely used by by schools um, in in the, in the school district. Um, but um, it, it's really more more of a question for um, for uh, uh, for for DOE. But j just sort of piggybacking on your question, I do think that, that there's a there's there's a, uh, maybe a related question for for us when you know as I said this this is gonna be the largest this is gonna be the largest branch library um, in the system you know out, outside of, outside of the central library um, and we're we're excited we're excited to serve the neighborhood um, we are gonna have this great um, this great um, really unprecedented teen space on on the mezzanine. Um, and we we do want to um, be um, w welcoming 
um, to any 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 teenagers who want to come to use it. And I think there's some proactive work we can do with schools and particularly schools, you know, most 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 in need. Um, and I do think this gets to the question of when we open these great new libraries and we're going to have a, a bunch of them, we're going to be opening Adam Street, we're going to be opening Brooklyn Heights um, and then later on a revitalized Walt Whitman. We're going to have the new Southside space um, and, it, you know, it, it does get get at um, when, when we open a new space, um, casting a, a wide net to let people know about it and, um, uh, you know, particularly folks, folks who need us, um, need, need us, need us most. And, you know, with, it's been particularly interesting with Adam Street, where, again, we're sort of creating a library community starting at the beginning. And um, Kat, Kat and her team have been, you um, um, talking to lots of stakeholders in the neighborhood. Um, we've been very focused on Farragut houses in, 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 in particular. Um, so I think that's sort of a, a, a real, a really important part of, for, for us when we open, open new spaces. It's not just building them, but making sure that we're doing what we can to communicate with, um, people who can, um, uh, who, who, who can really use them and need them. Thank you. Uh, I, I think based on Nick's question, this conversation and a previous meeting, it, it might be very helpful for our committee to follow up with the district to find out what they're planning uh, in the STEM space and to find out their opportunities uh, for partnership or collaboration uh, with us. Uh, Ms. Thompson Manning, did you have any question or comment for the library? Uh, no, I um I didn't have I don't have any questions. Okay. Just so everyone knows, my for some reason, even though I've been charging my device, mine is a little wonky, and if I fade out, I'm going to try to get back on another uh, device. My apologies. So thank you very much uh, for that presentation. Uh, very briefly, are there comments or qu very brief comments or questions from the uh, audience, the public, uh, uh, for the library? Do we see anyone with a raised hand or starting to speak? None. Uh, we will move Betty? on. Yeah. Betty, this is Judy Stanton. I'm a member of the public. May I ask yeah. Hi, question? Judy. Welcome to our committee. Hi. Absolutely. I have a quick question for David. David, are the contents, the current contents in the Brooklyn collection of the main library and um, Grand Army Plaza, are they remaining intact there? Or are any of them being moved to the new Brooklyn Center, to the Historical Society? Um, so every, everything that, that we have in, in the, in the Brooklyn collection is, is ultimately going to get moved to the, um, uh, to the, to the, to the center for, um, for, for, for Brooklyn history. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, and, uh, you know, as, as, um, uh, some of you may may know we're, we're also embarked on a um, uh, a large renovation project at the central library, um, and um, th that that space that's that had been occupied by the Brooklyn collection um, is um, now space that we can um, factor it factor into um, into that project. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to move the um, agenda on to the chair's report. Uh, I have a few brief announcements and then I'll turn this over to, to Dorothea Thompson Manning, who will lead us in a discussion about a future meeting that might be planned. So uh, there was a borough budget consultation uh, with the Department of Ed and School Construction uh, that Mr. Paris sent me some notes on. And uh, as we know from reading the media, there's a decrease in tax revenue. They're waiting for state and federal funding. 
is a hiring freeze in schools and central office and central office uh, budget cuts. Uh, they've had to spend more money on uh, not only the technology, but the, the cleaning material, the PPE, um, and so on. Uh, so there's a significant uh, budget problem. Uh, let's see what else. And the suggestion was that community boards can advocate for budget restoration and partner with schools. So if we know of specific schools to get Reso A funding, so that's a specific grant, let's say for a, a library or a playground, that type of thing, and funding from the city council. So we can encourage schools uh, to follow up in that way. Um, and we did include in our district statement the need for not only for the technology that the students are using at home, but for the, the Wi-Fi, the broadband access, and so on. That's uh, very important for the equity uh, of education. Uh, okay. Um, I attended the District 15 Participatory Action Relay, Participatory Action PAR, P A R, uh, report at the CEC meeting. We heard from Maddie Fox about her program a few months ago. And they've been doing a lot of outreach and speaking to parents about what they want vis-a-vis -vis rezoning or having a, more of an open application lottery. And they'll be reporting out in the middle of November. It's important that the parents who will be applying for kindergarten for next September, that they know if they have a zoned school or if they're going to be applying uh, in a lottery. Uh, the superintendent of District 15 was very pleased that the district won a two-year grant to support efforts in integration. It's over $2 million to be spent over two years. It's not for specific teachers in specific schools, but rather to support uh, staff education, parent workshops, uh, libraries, uh, that will promote culturally responsive education and equity. And we'll be hearing more about that. And we expect to be hearing soon from District 13 because they also applied uh, for this grant. Uh, at the District 15 meeting, there was another point that was raised, which was about the scanning of students in some of the schools. That's where the students go through uh, similar to airports and other public buildings. And there's a concern because of um, equity issues that they're in some neighborhoods and not in others. And, and it adversely affects uh, students of color. But also because of COVID and the students have to line up pretty closely to go through scanning uh, that there's a lot of concern. So they anticipate having a town hall meeting and some media advocacy for the removal of scanning. So that's something um, of, of interest. It occurs throughout the city, of course. Uh, but that's something they are taking up. Uh, so are there any questions to me about that? And then I'll, I'll turn this over to Dorothea. No. Okay. If there are no questions, um, Dorothy Thompson Manning will will uh, raise an issue and hold a conversation. Thank you, Dorothy. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm hoping that uh, my battery doesn't go dead. That's why I was off for a while trying to plug up my um, iPad. I want to talk to you about um, something that has been brought to um, the Cultural Affairs Committee's attention that was first reported on at Transportation and Public Service, uh, public service and they decided that maybe it would um, be good for our community. Also, when I explained to you what it's about, uh, what we can do is make a decision as to whether or not this is something that we as a committee would like to undertake. And if so, we would be having a joint meeting with Parks. Um, I believe the date is December 7th. So now I'll tell you what it's about. 
there is um, an organization called Take Down Columbus NYC. And they're concerned with the uh, statue of um, Christopher Columbus that's in various locations in the city. One of the things they talked about was that the stat uh, statue that's located on park property and um, they would like to see about uh, having these statues removed. The people involved would take down to Columbus, um, their community members with backgrounds in social work, mental health and education. And most of the members are high school students, high school teachers in Brooklyn, and they conduct weekly teach-ins at local statues of Christopher Columbus to educate people about the full history of his legacy. So while conducting those meetings, they found out every Columbus statue has 24 seven police surveillance. Sometimes three or four. The base salary for New York City police officers is between 42,000 and 85,000. So their estimate is that the cost is between 14,000 to 28,000 a month to protect the uh, statues. And they're saying that the statues also pull officers away from doing other work in the neighborhood. So what they're saying is they, we're talking about this committee, is that they would like to see the statues uh, removed because they feel that they're offensive and also because of how costly they are. Um, so what they, they want to do is address um, our committee along with the parks committee, and that would be December the 7th. What I'd like to know from the, uh, the members of our committee is whether or not you think this is something that we should undertake. Uh, and if so, then we would have a vote on whether or not we would be meeting with um, the parks committee in December. I'll try to answer as many questions as I can. Do you see I'm reading from my notes because I'm not that familiar with the group, um, but I'll try to answer whatever I can if anyone has any questions. I'm sorry, I moved my call. This is Eric, I have a question. Um, I work uh, at the Kings County Clerk's Office, which is in the building uh, that is that, that houses Brooklyn Supreme Court. Uh, the park surrounding the court is called Columbus Park. Mm -hmm. And in front of uh, the Supreme Court building is a large statue of Christopher Columbus on a pedestal. Um, I'd say it's about two and a half stories, maybe three stories high. Um, so my question is, is this one of the statues that they want to remove? This is, that's the first question. Uh, the second question is, would they want to change the name of the park? That's the second question. And the third thing is an observation. The observation is, I haven't seen that many, that, uh, uh, that much police activity in terms of protecting the statue in particular uh, uh, in Columbus Park. Um, there's a, uh, for, for some reason, there's uh, a lot of teenagers who like to go behind Borough Hall and skateboard. Um, uh, the the uh, the uh, the borough president has put up signs saying no skateboarding. Yet the the uh, teenagers skateboard at will, and I don't see any police uh, coming around to stop 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 them from doing so. So if they're not policing that activity, I don't see how they could be policing uh, or protecting the statue. So um, I don't know of any other uh, um, places around the borough that has a statue of, 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 uh, of uh, Christopher Columbus, but I don't see any, any police presence there. So again, my question is, 
Is this one of the statues that they would want to remove? And would they want to change the name of the park? I'm going to answer what I have in front of me. Mm -hmm. uh, they would like to address CB2 about the Columbus statue created by Emmis Devins, located in Columbus Park in front of the NY New York City Supreme Court building in downtown Brooklyn. So to I'm sorry, Dorothea, you you got you broke off. I didn't hear you because a call came in and I declined it. So could you repeat that? I'm sorry. One of the to answer to one of your questions, one of the statues they would like to address CB2 about is the Columbus statue created by Emma Stebbins, located in Columbus Park in front of the New York State Supreme Court building in downtown Brooklyn. So to okay. answer one of your questions is just that's one of the ones they would like to address. I cannot tell you about whether or not there is any police uh, presence. I'm just reporting on what this committee says is going on. I have no knowledge of that. There is nothing else also that says whether or not they want to change names. Their main focus seems to be to remove the statues. Where they, If they remove them, I don't know what would happen to them. That is their focus. Thank you. Any other questions? Nothing, you see nothing, Betty? I don't see anything. Okay. So uh, right now, and I'd like to know, um, I'm not sure how we would go about doing this. Um, maybe we can do a show of hands or whatever. Is this something that the youth committee would like to undertake? Is this something that we would like to address about the removal of the Christopher Columbus statues? And it would come to us only because of the cultural um, aspects. So um, is there a way we can poll our committee uh, members, um, Betty, to find out? Yeah, I believe Nick has left. I'm not sure if Meredith is still here. So I, th I think we can just call each person's name and ask them. So the question isn't whether we want to remove this, whether we want to engage in this conversation right. with the Parks Department. The Pit Parks Committee, I'm sorry, the Parks Committee and the group who's advocating in terms of that we're youth education and cultural affairs, statues are cultural affairs. Do we want to engage with this? So, Mr. Sprawl, yes or no? Uh, sure, let's engage in it. Okay, uh, myself, I'll say sure, let's engage in it. And Ms. Manning, Thompson Manning? I'm going to say no. Okay. I think Nick has left. Meredith, are you there? Yes. I say yes. You say yes. I see Oscar. What do you I, say? I vote yes to engage in this conversation. Yes. Okay. And uh, Santia? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Okay. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So six. No, Nick was, so it's six of us. Nick wasn't there. So it, uh, it's five, one, two, five, and two, one, two, zero. So it's, uh, is anyone else on our committee that I didn't uh, get your vote? No. Okay, so it sounds like we want to engage in this conversation, right? So thank you. Just to Betty, um, Betty, I think the next thing is whether or not we're going to take a motion that we're going to be meeting with um, the Parks Committee December the 7th. Do we have to do that or we're just going to be included in their meeting? Um, we were asked by the board office to discuss it oh. and what do we think. And then, okay. So I, I think we want to discuss it. So if we're discussing it, it's at that, that's the meeting. Okay. That, that was my understanding. Uh, Ted, is that your understanding? That's exactly correct, Chair Fibish. Okay. So that means based on the number of um, replies that we get that we will be uh, attending that meeting with the Parks uh, Department uh, December 7th. The Parks right. Committee, yeah. The Absolutely. Parks. Yes. Yeah, good. 
Thank and you. Ju just to be clear, that would replace your late December meeting. Right. Well, maybe our late okay. November. Because we have a meeting before Thanksgiving and a Christmas time meeting. So it will replace one of our meetings. <laughs> one of our meetings, because <laughs> we had talked in, also in the past about um, teen food justice. And if that's something that the health committee wants to meet about, we met with them last year. And if we can get the teens to speak about the food justice and the growing food in the classroom, that could be with the health department. I mean, the health committee, I'm sorry, another time. So, yeah. So thank you for engaging in this conversation. So I think the next thing is the community forum. And I think Sonia from the uh, CCRB wants to speak. Is she here? Yeah. Yes, I am. And I just unmuted myself. Thank you so much. I just have a quick announcement. Um, so the Youth Advisory Council is now accepting applications and they're due November 30th. Uh, so uh, the youth can feel free to apply. If there's anyone with questions, they can either call or text me or uh, feel free to shoot me an email, but I can repost that information once again in the chat so that everyone has it. Mm -hmm. um, since our young person, our youth representative, uh, Asuka is here. Asuka, do you have any questions about that? So, because you would be maybe telling some in your school about this opportunity. So do you have any questions about this opportunity? I, I don't know at the moment, but you know, I'll, I'll probably do a little bit more research on my own and, and pass it along, even if I'm not joining. No, I, we, we're just asking, you know, since you know probably a lot more young people than some of us do. Uh, yeah, thank you. Okay, um, is there anyone else for a community forum? I know our librarians are here. We heard a lot from the library, and I'm sure your branches are doing as well as you can under the uh, conditions. Okay, are there any anybody else for a community forum? Okay, so the next thing is the uh, approval of the minutes uh, from our September meeting. They were sent uh digitally were there any comments or concerns about those minutes okay so hearing none can we say that the minutes are approved by consensus okay yes uh, thank you thank you um okay um uh, is there any other business to come before the board no, we have, do we have a motion to adjourn? Yeah. Right. Oscar moves to adjourn and a second. I second. Uh, Santia, thank you so much. And we'll see you all soon and be well, read books if you can from the library and uh, stay well everyone. Yeah. I'm excited that Eric Sproul came back because we haven't seen you for a while, Mr. Sproul. Yes, I am too. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that the that the technical difficulties that I have been saddled with have been somewhat taken care of. Good, and I'm glad everyone's well and seeing everyone's faces. Yeah. So nice to see you, Mr. Sproul. Okay.